Well, let's take a look at the menus on this new 205 AC-DC. Um, straight in, looks like we're set up for SMIG. Let's go to the home menu and see what we got here. So we've got SMIG, regular MIG, flux cord MIG, stick welding, DC TIG, AC TIG, settings, and user manual. Let's go look at AC TIG, that seems to be the one everyone's raving about for this machine. So, it's telling us to plug our TIG torch into the negative terminal, disconnect the lead that's there for the MIG. Okay, so showing us 137 amps right now. Turn the wheel, we can change that. Voltage knob doesn't seem to do anything. And we've got AC TIG information and memory. Uh, it looks like we've got no advanced settings to change any of the the things we like to do on AC. Let's go see in the settings if we can turn on advanced. So it's similar to the other rebels. Yeah, there we go, advanced settings. Let's go back to home and let's look at AC again. Okay, there we have it. Now we've got the advanced menu. Let's see what we got. So we got pre-flow, post-flow, Ramp up, ramp down, 2T, 4T. It uh, looks like we got minimum amps for the pedal there, but that's greyed out. I assume that's because the pedal's not connected right now. Um, then we got a balance where we can set our amps on the positive and negative 2. And then we got the frequency there as well. Let's go see that frequency. This is what this thing can do that no other one out there can do right now. We can get right up to 400 hertz. Look at that. And then it will go all the way down to I think 20 or 25. Let's see. Wheel's a little slow to respond, but it seems to be working fine. 25 hertz, that's pretty low. Put that back to about 100. Let's just plug the pedal in quick and see if that other menu comes up. Okay, now we've got the option for the pedal, so we can set that pedal. Uh, lowest we can go on the pedal is 10 amps, let's see what the max is. 133, I assume that's... Yeah, 133. Not sure why it's that. Uh, maybe because I capped it here, let's go there, full 205. Now let's see if it will let us go. Yeah, it gives us a whole 205. So you can set that switch on point for the pedal anywhere you like. Interestingly, the ramp up and down are now greyed out, obviously, because the pedal's in. Um, shouldn't matter. You can control the ramp in and out with your pedal. Let's disconnect the pedal and see what happens when they come back. Yep. Disconnected the pedal, they came back. So smart enough to detect that on the fly. Let's go look at some of the other menus. We'll work backwards. So, DC tick. Check the polarity. So, looks like you got some memory options here, like the other Rebels. You can store yet yeah, four different memory settings got the information so you got parameters setup guide 2t40 guide and lift tick guide Let's click on 
one of those. Yeah, so it gives you some parameters here on the machine to get started. It's pretty neat. So DC TIG has got pulse. So it looks like we can turn pulse on or off. If we turn it on, so we can set the back current and the peak time. It's pretty cool. Be nice if we had that on AC2. Hopefully it's just a software update. That was what I was hearing. Uh, got the same kind of options as the AC. So we got the pre-flow, the post-flow, ramp in and out. 2T, 4T. Pedal's grayed out because it's not plugged in. And then on the DC you can turn the HF on, on and off so the high frequency start. Obviously on AC you're not going to want to scratch start because it's going to leave a big mess on your world. Uh, let's go back to the home. Okay, so we got stick. Let's get a look at stick. So you can turn your output on and off here. That's pretty neat. So you can put the holder down without arcing out your rod. It's got the same memory settings. Let's go look at the parameters. So it's the big thing about these ESAB inverters, they can do 6010 and 6011, so you can set it to different electrodes, so you got all other or 6010, 6011. Um, you got your hot start setting there, and then you got your arc force, so what you'd expect for a TIG that does stick to. Let's get a look at the flux cord. Here you can set your voltages, this gives you a good bit of control. Let's see what we can get out to. 26 volts, it's not bad. Wire feed goes to 475. So you got 2T and 4T on the MIG, which is kind of nice. Never had that on the MIG before. Then you can set your burn back settings as well. That's neat. Let's go look at regular MIG. So regular MIG, yeah, you got your voltage setting here again. Up to 26 volts again. Looks like the wire feeder go up. Yeah, 475 on both settings. So it doesn't matter if it's regular MIG wire or flux cord, it will still give you that wire feed speed. Uh, you can set your types of metal. So you got mild steel, aluminium or aluminium as you Americans say. And then there's stainless steel as well. So three of the most common materials you're going to weld on. Go look at the advanced settings. So we got inductance 2T, 4T again for the MIG. Pre flow and post flow for MIG. It's kind of nice. And we can pick between our regular MIG gun or a spool gun. And then it's got spot mode. So we can, let's see what happens when we turn that on. Spot mode on. So that opens up another menu. We can go change our spot time. Is down to uh, 0.1 seconds, up to 5 seconds. It's pretty cool. Turn that back off. And then we got the burn back settings again. So quite a bit of control there in that standard MIG mode. Good look at the SMIG. So this is ESAB's automatic welding mode SMIG. So we got three wire sizes here. So 0 0.023, 0 0.025, 0 0.025, 0 0.025, 0 0.025, 0 0.025, 0 0.025, 0 0.025, 0 0.025, 0 0.025, 0 0.025, 0 0.025, 0 0.025, 0 0.025, 
0.030 and 0 0.035 so let's just pick one in the middle so what we got again pick the type of material see if there's any cool settings on here inductance again 2t40 pre and post flows different types of mid guns whether you got your spool gun or your regular mid gun it's got the spot mode too and it's got the burn back settings so all the same kind of settings as the manual MIG mode so the other neat thing about this is you can as you set your wire speed to go faster it tells you what thickness material you can weld which is very clever just figuring that out based on the size of the wire you got in there and your wire feed speed so it's saying we can go up to quarter inch fixed steel so fairly reasonable and then we got this voltage trim so we can make the weld hotter or colder it's pretty cool Go back to the home menu, see what else we got. Let's have a look in the settings. So we've got information. Seems to be the firmware version and the software. Settings, languages, lots of different languages here. put that back on English before we get stuck basic and advanced mode we already went over that when we turned on the advanced mode and yeah, we can put it in metric or inch and then we can reset the world data and do a factory reset let's have a look at the user manual see what's in there uh, user operations so you got knob let's have a look and see what it says so press the knob okay not much of that oh okay here we go turn it and then it tells us what to do feeding operation just kind of some graphics that tell you how to use the thing doesn't seem to be any words that go with it. Seems fairly straightforward. Ah, this is neat. So it's got the part numbers for all the consumable parts here. Like in that, just get the part number here, go online, look at the parts. What's the final menu? Uh, maintenance, how to blow it out with air. Front and back. So, doesn't recommend taking it apart by the looks of it. How to do the display bezel. Oh, that's pretty cool the display bezel comes off and you can change the glass on it like that then troubleshooting I guess that's kind of helpful well if the thing turns on so yeah seems pretty cool we'll give it a go and do some welds at some point